Two New Jersey police officers on leave tonight after dash cam video captured a deadly shooting of Jerame Reed in Bridgeton. Now, I want you to take a look at this incident, and I'll tell you in advance, it's disturbing. We cut it off right before that faithful shot. Don't you move! Now, a little background on this. As you can tell here, there's familiarity uh, between uh, the victim and the officer. Uh, the officer uh, reportedly had, uh, had already been involved in an arrest of, this, uh, of the gentleman that you see here. Uh, Mr. Reed had uh, done, I believe, a, a pretty long stint uh, before. However, um, what the background is, they were pulled over for a traffic stop for not stopping at a, uh, coming to a stop at a stop sign. They pull over and they were asked for license registration. At this point, they recognized one another. Uh, reportedly, when the glove compartment was open, there was a gun present there. And that's when the officer drew his weapon and you saw what came out of that. When he was getting out of the car before that faithful shot, it appears, at least per the dash cam video, that he's unarmed with his hands up, even though he was repeatedly told to not move. Now, uh, attorney is investigating the video footage about the legality of the officer's actions because, as we said, Reed was shot while, at least visually, raising his hands, as mentioned here, Reed does have a criminal history, including about 13 year sentence he served for attempted murder, and that's according to court records. He was released in, Jan in February, I should say, of 2008. Listen, the facts will play themselves out. Um, if you see the whole long extended clip, um, it didn't begin as what was going to appear to turn out to be a violent, if not a fatal, con uh, uh, you know, a confrontation. And you said he claimed his driver's license was in the glove compartment? I think he went to reach for it, and that was fine. But once the glove compartment opened and there was a gun sitting in the glove compartment, the officer, I believe understandably, uh, was put on edge. Then the question becomes, was he not listening to commands given by the officer? Um, was he confused by the commands of the officer when he opened the door? Um, and then tries to raise his hands. Was he doing it just to say, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm just gonna get out? Or was he going to confront the officer? I just can't help think, guys, how different viewing this looks after what we saw or heard, I should say, in Ferguson and after what we saw in Staten Island and how those in other cases and hearing the reporting of the Akai Gurley case or seeing the case that happened in, in Ohio with the, and in other cases, in other students in South Carolina, et cetera, how that all now is playing in whenever there's an exchange, and this is a black officer and a black victim, but nonetheless police and uh, people of color, how much we're all colored by what's happened in the past year. Um, and you've spoken this as well before well, the past you, year. For African Americans, this is nothing new. I mean, because of because of um, what happened in Staten Island and Missouri, this is nothing new. Okay, but you let's this say you're nothing in a, new at let's all. Let's say you're in a jury. And I, 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 I feel for the officers because let, let's face it, it's dark, right? You can barely see. And what's tragic, somebody's dead because the vehicle apparently went past a stop sign. That was the reason why, because I've watched the video several times, why they pulled him over. The officer, the black cop standing to the right, told them to open the glove compartment. And that's when, when he saw the weapon. And what's crazy about this entire thing, it started out as a conversation between one cool African-American to another cool African-American. The cop was like, what's up, bro? The dude was like, what's up, man? And they were talking to each other. And, and then, then they, they recognize turned. each other. Right. And they recognize each other in their prior dealings, because apparently... But, but it never got tough, though, Richard. It never got tough until the officer panicked. And I'm, I'm not saying he's right or wrong, but you, but you pull a vehicle over for running a stop sign. Clearly, the man is getting... He did tell him, don't move, the officer. The man in the video that we don't show, he's getting out of the car with his hands, just like this, and pow. Uh, you know... Police officers have gotten a lot of criticism and a lot of grief in the last few months, and, and in some cases, justifiably so. Uh, and we've seen them be a little overly sensitive to other criticisms where they say, well, now you're being anti-police. 
it, it's important to remind ourselves from time, but being a cop is an incredibly tough job. It's an incredibly tough job. And just watching that exchange, the interactions between a police officer and a suspect, especially when they know, I mean, I think it's, it's to the officer's benefit that he knew this guy, knew of his, of his history. If there was a gun in the car, then everything has to be slowed down and everything has to be very careful in those exchanges. I, I'm not... I'm not sure. But does that from mean what you I've panic? The, and, and I'm not second guessing anyone. But the moment that a gun is seen, does that mean you panic? Well, but that also means that any misstep, any step in the wrong direction, could be the last one for the officer. And, and, and you know, wait and one second. It's unfair. Fair. And I don't know how I feel about this one, Dom. I usually, as you know, hate people with certain fence. But as much as we say the actions of other officers have colored perception, how about the officers who look about Ramos and Lou, and they say? Hey, some guy pulled a gun and killed two cops, right? And you look at that scene, and obviously the officer um, that was doing the talking was the officer in charge, right? And he didn't know. I don't know. I think his partner's holding a flashlight here. So he feels he gave the guy 30 commands, and either the guy didn't listen or was panicked also himself here as the guy's Richard, yelling at you with a gun drawn. But Richard, but, I don't but know. Look, but look at the white police officer that was on the other side. He didn't panic. At all. Well, he's also not on the side with the glove compartment and the gun. That is true. But but the officer just and I, you know, he just went into overdrive. Yeah. If you, if, I'm telling you, if you f move, you're dead. I, I just, is that what you learn in the academy? There's one, there's one I don't know. Point. You know what? Everything you say is right. Everything you say is right. And, and I'm telling you, it just points to late, late at night. Right? You're in a situation. You got a dark car. We got the benefit of watching this thing 30 times through a dash cam. You're two feet from a guy that you know has got a rap sheet for attempted murder. He knew that, right? And I don't know if he knew it at the time. Well, he knew the guy, and he knew because he was involved in the prior they stop. A, they had a pass back. They did. But, but, I, Richard, but here's my point to, to he knew the guy was some angel. Okay. But here's, here's my point to African Americans, and this is going to get me in trouble with the black community right now. When you walk around with a do rag on and a cap. And your gene, what do you think people are gonna think? If I'm a cop, if I'm if I'm that same cop, I would issue the same, you better not move or you're gonna be a dead man. And I just I just want it. Too too many guns, too many people with yeah. guns, too much of an environment where cops have to fear that every traffic stop it, it could be their last one. I mean, that's not something that can be ignored in these kinds of con no, conversations. No, I, I, and too often it is. But just look at the different cops. The white cop was completely calm. He's on the other side of the car. He, yeah, I'm not but, minimizing uh, yeah, that. Yeah, but the, a bullet could go to the other side, and the white cop also, was perfectly calm. The guy he's the black watching. Cop. The guy he's watching. The driver's got his hands out. Right. Saying, do whatever you got to right. do. I right. ain't moving. That's true. You know? That's true. All right, coming up next year, latest uh, surrounding Deflate Gate. Um, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, they actually spoke publicly today regarding the scandal, and both of them say, "Don't know what you're talking about here." We'll talk about more about that after this.